Alley is a community platform that helps creators connect with like-minded people and develop lifetime meaningful relationships. I'm Jason Saltzman, the CEO and founder of Alley. My experience with startups over the past 15 years has given me the unique opportunity to connect with the brightest founders in the world. One thing always remains constant, the unbelievable knowledge we get from each other by sharing our stories. Join us while we learn from founders what it is really like to start a business, the hurdles they have overcome, and the lessons they've learned along the way. This is Resilience. I'm so happy to have you here, but let's tell everybody who you are and what you do. All right. Well, thank you for having me here. Um, my name is Paul Galish. I'm the founder and CEO of Voxy. Um, Voxy is one of the market leading uh, companies in the English learning business um, uh, around the world. So my first question that we want to expose to the audience is like, the why, like, like what at, at the core, like why did you start the business? Like what was the vision behind it? I started the company about eight years ago. Um, prior to this, I was a venture investor for Richard Branson's Virgin Group. Uh, right out of college, when I was 22, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life, so I bought a plane ticket to Santiago, Chile, and I didn't speak a word of Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, and I managed to convince this guy, Ricardo, who's still uh, a, a dear friend of mine, uh, to let me work for him in his automotive parts warehouse. So I learned Spanish uh, in a very, very personalized fashion, getting yelled at and made fun of by okay. these Chilean warehouse workers. But I learned Spanish very quickly, um, and that really stuck with me. So then fast forward again, I'm, I'm working for Virgin, looking for an idea, and I liked languages. I liked um, the aspect of communication. I liked the global nature of it. Um, so I downloaded Rosetta Stone's 10K. Yep. Um, and this is in 2010, and they barely mentioned the internet. And I learned that Rosetta Stone had basically a single curriculum. What else was happening in 2010? First of all, Apple you know, hit like a billion downloads in the App Store, so mobile was everything. Yep. And also, Facebook had just launched Newsfeed. And what's Newsfeed? Just personalized content, right? Yeah. So I thought, why can't we create, why can't we use this amazing technology that's getting cheaper and cheaper yeah. to create personalized curriculum to teach everyone around the world English um, in a way that's, that's, that's highly relevant to them and therefore much more effective. Everyone believes that when they pick something, they have to have an extreme amount of knowledge. But in your case, and my case too, like co-working wasn't nothing. Yeah. It wasn't an industry, yeah. you know? So yeah, like, you how do you it. even, you know, do it, right? So, you know, I'll go back to what, what Richard said. And if you think about how Richard Branson started Virgin Atlantic, he was delayed on a flight sitting in an airplane, in an, air, in an airport. Yeah. He managed to rally a couple hundred passengers. Yeah. And he chartered a flight. He knew nothing about yeah, aviation. Yeah, so I knew cool. knew nothing about English learning or really education in general, but I had the passion. Yeah. And I think that passion is really what ultimately sort of bridged the gap until I got the subject matter you're, expert on board. It's, it's kind of like you're pissed um, off. You said that your investors appreciate the fact that you you don't have all the answers. What's that like? Like, and and well, I have two questions actually. A, what's that interaction like? And B, how do it sounds like you have good, great investors? The quality of the investor and the quality of the investor relationship is really. I think is what has been paramount to, to Voxy's success. And I, I do spend um, a lot of time building trust with my, my investors and making sure that you know, we're in this together. Yeah, how did you track the right people yeah. and how much of a game changer was that? It's never like you're done hiring. Yeah. I have, you know, two key hires I need to make that I've been thinking about in the back of my mind for um, months if not quarters, um, you know, when I needed to bring in a new chief revenue officer last year, I literally spent about 40 or 50% of my time for three months wow. interviewing people, cold, yeah. like stalking people on LinkedIn, sending cold emails to, you know, other CROs, yeah. and having coffee with, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of people trying to, yeah. to find the right person. So it really is, um, A, it takes a lot of work, and B, it, I feel like it never, ever ends. How do you feel you have actually inspired this team to work with you? Because it kind of went through like a, the hiring process of everything. Yeah. But how did you sell them? Because uh, it's a sale too, right? You, oh my you, gosh, absolutely. So how did you do that? I, I would say I'm fortunate that my particular, um, you know, raison de dessert, whatever, my, my, my industry, mm -hmm. um, does, does a good job of helping me recruit. So English learning is this enormous opportunity that almost everybody can relate to. I think that helps me recruit quite a bit, right? We have a huge TAM, mm -hmm. you know, 100 billion plus is spent in mm -hmm. this category. Most of it's offline, so we have a lot of good macro fundamentals, and then it feels good. Thank you so much. This has been an amazing, amazing t tidbits of knowledge, and it's been really educational for me to learn about you, and um, thank you so much for sharing it with our audience. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. 
any time. And I want to thank you guys for listening. And it is definitely our mission to share this amazing information with these awesome entrepreneurs about what it's like to really build a business.